I'm Jamie. I'm Sarah. Together, Together we are the Fossils, Fossils Galore, Galore team leaders. Well, hello and welcome to Discovering Fossils Galore. I'm Gary Tustin and I'm going to be joining Jamie Jordan and Sarah Moore as they take us through the fascinating world of fossils. Well, thank you for joining us today here in Fossils Galore in Mark. Now, of course, it's very cold outside. Do you get to do many digs over this time of year or do you wait until it's warm up? Okay, so this time of year is the best time of year to be going out fossil hunting and, and checking out, seeing what's coming out of the ground. So we've got all the rain, we've got the frost that's uh, cracking open the rocks, um, and it does all the work for us, really. Um, so yeah, so it leaves the fossils for us to find. So the colder conditions actually make it easier to find fossils? Much easier, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about Fossils Galore, what it is and what you do. Okay, so Fossils Galore was started at the age of 13, um, so as an educational website, so I wanted to educate the world on what lies beneath our feet. Um, it then went from there, so I started fossil hunting trips when I was 16, um, and it just grew. So I, I needed a place to put my collection, so my lifetime collection, and uh, managed to start a museum and start displaying all those finds. So you said your lifetime collection. Is every fossil in the museum actually yours, or is it has it grown to the point where it's now contributed by other museums or other collectors? Um, most of the fossils are mine. Um, we do occasionally get uh, donations from the public um, and sometimes donations from other museums as well. Um, but other than that, it's based around most of my collection. Fantastic. Now, would you like to tell us a little bit more about what people are going to discover if they stick around and keep watching the programme? So, we're going to be showing you behind the scenes of our site visits, um, something that you never normally get to see. Uh, we're a unique sort of team that's on 24-7 call-out. Um, we could get called out any time, even right now. Um, we could get called out to go and see what's been discovered, um, and possibly an excavation. Was it you and Sarah on site doing a dig and, like you say, a possible excavation as well? That's it, yeah. So um, you just never know what you're going to find. So if we're very lucky, we might come across maybe another dinosaur skeleton like Indy, um, the Iguanodon. You know, possibly something maybe a little bit smaller or bigger, you never know. Because, yes, of course, you mentioned Indy, but you guys actually did discover an iguanodon, which, for people who don't know, it's a big dinosaur. Yeah, so uh, Indy was around about eight metres long and three metres tall. Um, we haven't determined the species just yet, but we're still excavating the bones out of the rock, so there's lots more to be found out so far. But Indy was found on a routine site visit, a bit like what we're going to show you in this video. Oh, fantastic. So, like you say, there is a chance that in future videos, after future digs, because you're going to keep taking videos of further digs. That's it, yep. So, um, so keep an eye out. We've got lots to show you. So, at the moment, it's what we call field season, and there's plenty being found, and there's a lot to, to tell you guys. Oh, great. So, it literally... We never know what's going to come up from one week to the next. That's it, yeah, so it's always a surprise. Brilliant. I'm now joined by Sarah Moore. She is an up and coming paleontologist. Tell me a little bit more about that. Why have you decided to take an interest in paleontology? Okay, so I've always been into history, so I'm a massive history nerd from a little kid. And five years ago, I stumbled across Fossils Galore, got into it, volunteering, and haven't left. Fantastic. Now, is it more the fossil side of things, or is it the crystal side of things? What piques your interest? It started off with the crystals. I grew up with crystals, I always loved crystals, uh, but over the five years I've got more into fossils. So just the discovery of animals and what used to live. Okay, so are you following this through with an educational uh, branch, or is it just more sort of learning in the field? Learning in the field. So I'm learning from Jamie, who's obviously got all these years of knowledge, so I'm picking that up as we go. Oh, fantastic. So, what do you enjoy most about being on the digs? Discovery. Discovery. So it's turning over that rock and you could find something new or just a missing link to something. So it's just always that you never know what you're going to find. What should we expect to see in these upcoming videos? 
Okay, so you'll get to see uh, first how and what we do, we actually do. So where we go, the places we look, how we do it, and the tools we use. And you'll be there right along with us as we're discovering all these different properties. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. Today we're going to a quarry in Kent in search of giant ammonites. Okay, so here we have an ammonite sticking out of the rock. So I'm just going to start chiseling away at it along its layer to expose the rest of the ammonite. There we have it. Giant ammonite from the Cretaceous. So the site that we are hunting at today is 100 million years old from the Cretaceous period. So there's uh, quite a deep sea at the time with giant ammonites swimming about with lots of other bivalves and brachiopods and that. So the sea was teeming with life. So here we have a Lepidotus tooth. Is one of the vertebrates that would have been living in the sea with the giant ammonites. So we have a new piece of technology here. Uh, it's a thermal imaging camera that you can use on your mobile phone by Fleur. And we're just going to have a, a quick try to see if we can see if there's any difference between uh, the heat signatures of the fossils that are in the rocks. just sticking out of that rock. So all you have to do is just look around the rocks and you never know you might be lucky enough to see one like this sticking out. i 
parcels can take a very long time. You need to really take your time and be as delicate as you can to not damage the fossil in any way uh, while extracting it. And as you can see from this one, it's a tough one to get out of the wrap. Uh, but giving it more patience and dedication, you'll be able to extract the specimen. Just about there now, um, so the last final hits to expose the specimen. in the pick and there we go a giant ammonite and here you can see how much the sea was teeming with life back in the Cretaceous period So you can spot which rock it's under. Unfortunately, sometimes there's ones that do get away. There's a perfectly complete ammonite inside this rock, but we can't get to it. And here are some of the finds from the site. Okay, so shall we start off with that first find? Yeah, so this is the ammonite that Sarah discovered first. So you can see where some of it's missing, but we've got to put that back on once we do the preparation. But you can see where it's spiraling to the centre there. It's got a lovely coppery colour. Is that a natural colour? Um, well, that's not a natural colour. What it is, is lots of iron that's left um, around where the shell would have been um, of the ammonite. And it's discoloured the rock that's um, inside as such. Fantastic. Can you show us the second one? The one that took a, an hour, was it, to get out? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, so this one took quite a while to get out. Um, now what we have here is not the whole ammonite, so as you saw during um, the video, uh, 
I, after I excavated this one, uh, I also checked around to see if there was any more uh, to be found. Um, but unfortunately, it was only this part. But it's still a really nice piece of ammonite, uh, and what we have here is is the uh, living chamber of, of the ammonite. So this is where the animal would have been living. Fantastic. And then we've got the big one at the back. Don't worry, I won't ask you to pick him up. Yep, so this one, the bee, and it's not every day you come across um, uh, one this size. Um, you can see all the ribs and that going round, so that's what will define the species of the ammonite. Um, and we also have something quite rare inside, so we have this black line. So this is a, it's a, a black tube that would have fed uh, between the chambers of the ammonite itself. Um, and as you can see, you can see the ammonite spiralling in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not every day you come across a big one like this um, and just to be laying there for you to find we found the imprint and then we thought you know what it's got to be around here somewhere it kind of just disappeared um, and yeah with much patience and uh, dedication as well and time looking we, we found it you mentioned the imprint there do you ever keep the imprint okay, we don't always keep the imprint if the actual fossil like this one is here then we'll take that with us Sometimes we do keep both, but it's a good record to see the imprint. Sometimes the imprint has more detail than the fossil itself, so it's a bit of a hit and miss. Okay, well, if you have enjoyed the programme, then we'd ask you to like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you, Sarah. And if you'd like to tell us what's coming up on your next show. Yep, so we're looking uh, to show you some of the other sites that we go to, so some that are much older. Um, and also some of the more important finds that we're coming across as well. Uh, we don't just want to stick with fossils, we want to branch out to the crystal side of things as well. So have a look at the minerals that, that could replace the fossils as well. Um, lots of different locations like that and uh, lots more that you would never normally see. So we're going to show you what we see. Absolutely brilliant. Now if you have found any fossils, if you'd like to share your photos, with them either on their Facebook site at Fossils Galore or go and have a look at the website which is www.fossilsgalore.com and of course please leave us your comments we'd love to hear more from you from me Gary Tustin thank you very much and goodbye <laughs>